welcome to our Christmas play this year, boys and girls. We're so glad you could join us. Today's story is Grumpy Bear's Christmas. It was almost Christmas, and the forest was a flurry of activity. The animals were bustling here and there, putting up the Christmas tree, wrapping presents, making tasty cakes and cookies, while the young ones scampered about with excitement. Everyone was looking forward to Christmas. Well, almost everywhere. Every, well, almost everyone. Merry Christmas, Mr. Bear! Merry Christmas, Block. What piffle! I am a sensible creature, and I sleep all through the cold winter. Now I am going back to bed until spring, and if anyone wakes me up, I shall be very, very grumpy. <laughs> grumpy Bear knew he would be hungry when he woke, so he checked his pantry. There were pies and pastries, hams and cheeses, crisp crackers, jars of fruit, and sticky sweet jams. dreaming about his pastries, candies and cornbread and cherry pies that were under his bed when there was another knock at the door. Hello, Mr. Bear! I brought you a Christmas present! Christmas present? <laughs> piffle and triple piffle. I don't like presents and I don't like Christmas. All I want is a little peace so that I can sleep. Now leave me alone so I can do just that. Now, Grumpy Bear was really grumpy. To cheer himself up, he dreamed about the bottles and bottles of homemade lemonade he had in his cellar. Oh, what is it now? Oh, 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 oh Mr. Bear, help! Oh, help! It's poor Porcupine! He's stuck at the top of the Christmas tree! Come quick! Please hurry! Piffle, and triple piffle on top of that. Why can't everyone just leave me alone? He went back inside, slamming the door so hard the whole house shook, got back into bed and started snoring again. But he tossed and turned, wiggled and squirmed. He was dreaming of porcupine dangling by one tiny paw from the top of a, of a gigantic Christmas tree. Porcupine was trembling and he was about to fall. Grumpy Bear woke up saying, No! Jumping out of bed, Grumpy Bear raced up to the Christmas tree, he scrambled up the ladder, scooped Porcupine gently into his arms, and then helped him down to the ground. I'm so sorry I left you hanging, he mumbled. I suppose I've, I've been a bit grumpy, a bit of a grump. What can I do to make things better? Oh, I know what. We can have a Christmas party at my house. Bear's Christmas party was the best ever. There were pastries and cakes, cheeses and hams, stick sweet jams and cookies and homemade lemonade. They jiggled and jived and joked and laughed late into the night. Merry Christmas, everyone, and if you don't all come to my party next year, I shall be very, very grumpy indeed. Merry Christmas! Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to our story time. Today, I would like to tell you a story. And the story that I'd like to tell you is the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And then afterwards, we might even sing that song. So I hope you remember it. Anyway, let's get started. Well, when Rudolph was born, he was born a very special reindeer. He didn't know it at the time, but he helped Santa one Christmas. So let's get started. Well, Rudolph, because as he got older, his nose started growing, and it started getting bigger and bigger, and it turned red, a bright, bright red, so red that it would just shine. Well, he went out to play with his reindeer friends, and they just laughed at him and made fun of him and teased him and called him names, and poor 
Rudolph, he felt so bad that he walked away with tears running down his cheeks because he didn't like being called names. He was different and he knew he was different from the other reindeer and he didn't want to be different from the other reindeer. And he took some dirt and he put over his nose hoping that would hide the bright red glow, but it didn't. So he went home and that night, which was Christmas Eve, and he knew that Santa would be leaving to go on his uh, tri uh, trip around the world, delivering toys to all the good little boys and girls. And he knew he'd better get to bed early because he wanted Santa to come and visit him. Well, he got and crawled in bed, and his nose was just all lit up, and, it, and he looked out, out the window, and out the window, he noticed that fog was starting to move in. He couldn't even see the stars or the moon, which are normally bright, shining in his window, because the fog started moving in. And Rudolph thought, oh dear, I hope Santa will be able to find my house tonight. So, anyway, he went to bed. Well, just as Santa was getting ready to leave the North Pole and to start making his trip around the world to deliver toys to all the good little boys and girls around the world, he got very concerned because he noticed also that the fog was starting to move in. And he got worried and afraid that he and the reindeer might lose their way. Well, he started out and he started out and he started delivering toys. But the later the time got, the more the fog moved in and the foggier it got. And just about the time he got to Rudolph's house to deliver his gift, he bumped into the chimney as he was trying to shimmy down it because he couldn't see the chimney. And he shimmied down Rudolph's chimney. And then he got inside and he started looking around trying to find the best place to put Rudolph's package present that he had made just for Rudolph. Well, he all of a sudden he saw a bright red glow coming from one of the bedrooms. And so Santa went up and opened the door very carefully. And what did he see? There was Rudolph lying sound asleep in his bed and his nose was glowing and it just radiated the whole room, just lit up the whole room. And Santa thought, aha, that's just what I need to help guide my sleigh. And he went up to Rudolph's bed and Rudolph woke up and he said, oh, he was startled. He said, oh, Santa, Santa, ah, ah, ah. And, he, and, and Santa said, oh, Rudolph, I see your nose is just a glowing. Well, Rudolph was embarrassed and he pulled the cover up over his nose, trying to hide his nose because it was just lighting up the whole room. And Santa said, Rudolph, your nose is just what I need. You can see it's a very foggy night, and I'm afraid we're going to lose our way. But you can come, and you can guide our sleigh, because your red nose will light up the whole sky and let us be able to find our way to all the good little boys and girls around the world so we can deliver the packages. Would you help, Santa? Would you help me tonight? Would you help guide our sleigh so we can deliver all over the world before morning? Rudolph said, I would love to help Santa because, you know, it was quite an honor for a reindeer to help Santa on Christmas. Well, he left a quick note for his mom and daddy so they wouldn't worry about him and said, see you in the morning, I've gone to help Santa. And he went out and they attached the harness to Rudolph and he was the fairy leader. And they took off and they started gliding all around the world. And because Rudolph's red bright nose, it guided the sleigh. And Santa was able to make all his deliveries that he needed to make. Well, just then, as the sun was starting to come up, Santa pulled back up in front of Rudolph's home. And his mom and daddy came out to greet him. And he said, Mama, Daddy, I'm home. Oh, we went all around the world delivering packages. And I helped. My red nose helped to light the way so Santa could deliver all the packages. Well, his mom and daddy were so proud of him. And then others came out. The other reindeer came out. And they started cheering for him. Hooray, hooray, Rudolph helped save Christmas this year. And Santa thanked Rudolph for his service. His service. 
and he got in the sleigh and wished everyone a Merry Christmas, and he and the reindeer flew back to the North Pole. Well, Rudolph was so happy. The other reindeer started patting him on the back and started saying, come play with us, come play with us, we'd love for you to play with us. And he was a hero. He became the hero. Now, and remember there's a song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Would you like to sing it with me? Now, every time we say reindeer, we're going to make the symbol for reindeer. You're going to do your fingers this way and put it on top of your head. And every time you say reindeer, you go reindeer. Okay, you ready? You know Dasher and Prancer and Donna and Blitzen. Comet and Cupid and Donna and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Come on, sing it with me. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would even say he glowed. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, You'll go down in his story. All right. I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas and so glad you could join us today. Bye. All right, everybody. Today we will be reading the Polar Express. Written by Chris Van Alsberg. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear, the ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had, ins had, insist had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not the ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal, I looked through my window and saw a, tree, a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an, in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large po pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I, tip, I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched, outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and, and ate candies with not... With, Nugget center is as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Soon, there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forest where Lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller, co on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, and the hills to, hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a, a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. The North Pole. 
It was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They are gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give the first gift to Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. The conductor answered, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside we saw hundreds of elves. elves. As our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl, so crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no further, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I'd ever heard before. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointed to me and said, Let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor had handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, Now, what would you like for Christmas? I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bear bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood, holding the bell high above him, and called out, The first gift of Christmas! A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me, and I put it in my bathroom pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us, then disappeared into the cold, dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said. But the train gave a sudden lurch, and we started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood up at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted, and the Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father. It's broken. When I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard the sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all those who truly believe. The End Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you all have a very, very Merry Christmas.